our history, the history of engagement, the Bunwarang and the Europeans all began at the arriving on our country over 200 years ago. It's become traditional to do stories about the debate about Australia Day in the lead up to January 26th. And for many Indigenous people, this year crystallises what has been lost in the wake of last year's referendum. Since the referendum failed, um, there has been a, an effort by some, uh, those that led the No campaign, uh, the coalition, to, to take it as some sort of mandate to take us backwards. And so we're at a low point at the moment. And our youth. Thomas Mayo was one of the most prominent campaigners for the Yes case in the referendum. And now, like many Indigenous people, he's been spending time working out where to go next. Australia Day for him has always been a bit perplexing. Well, growing up, never celebrated Australia Day. It was, um, I never really thought of it as much of a thing in Australia to, to have such, um, you know, sort of a nationalism in, in the way that we see in the United States, it's just been another day, a public holiday. It may not just be Indigenous people now feeling indifferent about Australia Day. Supermarket giant Woolworths quietly made the decision not to stock Australia Day products this year, due in large part to poor sales. A decision which immediately engaged some politicians in the run-up to January 26. A political storm has erupted. They don't want to celebrate Australia Day, well, that, that's a decision for them, but uh, I, I think people should boycott Woolworths. If people boycott Woolworths, if no one's buying the product, guess what? The jobs disappear. Woolworths is not the only commercial interest trying to navigate its way through issues of patriotism and symbolism. Musical theatre producer Carmen Pavlovic has tried to navigate the line between respectful solidarity and virtue signalling. We did consider not performing on January 26 as a mark of respect and solidarity. Um, in the end, we decided that we could just make a bigger contribution by going ahead with the show. The January 26 production will be donating the profits of the show to two Indigenous organisations, the Westerman Jillia Institute and the Yirriyarkin Theatre Company. What are we trying to do here? Are we using this to sell tickets? Most certainly not. Are we using this to try and increase our company's profits? Most certainly not. The discussion goes beyond merchandise and political point scoring, with pushback against including welcomes to country at some public events. It's the continuation of a strategy first floated during the referendum, fuelled in large part by divisive political debate. I'm getting a little bit sick of welcomes to country. I think some people feel like, well, I, I belong here too, I was born here. There's no genuine be feeling behind it. How are they taking action with those words? Wamanjika come with a purpose, it becomes rhetoric. There seems to be no essence of sol solidarity. You know, it just they, they just mouth the words and I go, no, this is about taking action. Post-referendum, there are concerns that that is what politicians are failing to do, with both the Queensland government and Victorian opposition walking back commitments to treaty. I'm really worried that the loss of the referendum will, is causing a, a reluctance um, to do anything visionary in Indigenous affairs. And we need, uh, we need big actions, we need, uh, you know, we need the courage to uh, try different things, we need to listen to Indigenous people and communities.